you know, um, I want to go back to 1975 a bit, just the environment in which you wrote the first book, the environment in which you're writing the book now. It does feel like um, it's a very different climate. And I want to pivot a little bit to, you know, you've got this, is it Journal of Dangerous Ideas? Controversial ideas. Controversial ideas. ideas. Yeah. And dangerous, not dangerous. Dangerous is a is a value thing. But talk about the environment for being a philosopher right now. Because I know you've, in addition to being the world's greatest living philosopher, you, you've encountered your own controversy with regard to views on, you know, disability and such going. Let, let me start with that. Um, where you're, where you've been controversial, have you been misunderstood? Uh, I've been partially misunderstood and partially some people still oppose what I say about what my, my what's been controversial that I've said about disability is that I think when a severely disabled infant is born with a condition that is not treatable or changeable and the prognosis is really bad, uh, that should be discussed with the parents and the parents should be given the option of either withdrawing treatment in if the baby is on a respirator, let's say, and without the respirator, the baby will die. So one option is to withdraw treatment. And that, in fact, happens right now. That happens in neonatal intensive care units across the country. It's also an end-of-life conversation we're having a lot more now. Yes. But it's a beginning-of-life conversation is where it feels very difficult. Right. And it, But as I say, withdrawing treatment seems to be accepted by the public. But if the, if the baby is not needing a respirator and there's no treatment you can withdraw that will bring about a rapid death, then I think that parents should have the option of ending the child's life humanely with a lethal injection. I don't think that's really very different from ending a child's life by withdrawing a respirator. But because I've said that, I've sort of stuck my neck out a bit and uh, people have come after me um, and said that this is ableism. Uh, but it's no more ableism than, as I say, allowing parents to choose to withdraw treatment or, for that matter, allowing women to have prenatal diagnosis and if the diagnosis shows a serious disability, to terminate their pregnancy. Um, and it's interesting that some of the same people who might attack me for what I say about parental option of euthanasia after birth would be among the staunchest defenders of a woman's right to end her pregnancy whenever she so chooses. But in this environment, um, because you know we've got so much controversy over certain ideas, I mean, if you were starting out as a young philosopher these days, do you think you would have the same uh, ability to talk about, I'm not I'm sounding like I'm softballing a question to you, but I, I'm, I'm honestly like when you talk to young graduate students, do you think these are the kinds of ideas they could explore? Some of the ex ideas we've been talking about they could explore, certainly ideas about animals, um, ideas that I've put forward about helping people in extreme poverty and that it's one of our obligations to help people in poverty if we have the more, life you can save enough. exactly the book the life you can save and uh, the organization i founded the life you can save which you can you can find online at the life you can save dot org and uh, even download the book completely free if you want to do that um so you know those issues maybe are not people could write about it's there are particular issues which seem to be very sensitive at the moment um so the Journal of Controversial Ideas recently published an article on merit in science, on the idea that um, the criteria for getting appointments and getting research grants should be merit-based. And uh, there are, I think, 29 authors of that article, including a Nobel Prize winner and other uh, notable scientists. They offered it to um, uh, PNAS, Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences, and were rather surprised to be told that this was too controversial for that uh, journal and that it might be harmful. So they shopped it around a bit and eventually they came to the Journal of Controversial Ideas and we had it peer reviewed. The, the reviewers uh, suggested some revisions, but otherwise generally they approved it and, and we published it. And, and I think, you know, we are keeping ideas that's open. That's had more than 100,000 yes, views Yes, that's so right, far. because it was written about in the Wall Street Journal and also in the New York Times. We've had over 100,000 views of, of that article, which it's, is incredible. It's really. merit versus, say, DEI. And I think that's one of the, I mean, there is the social good. You're somebody who talks about consequence, you know, and that's really, you know, so much of what I think about your philosophy is really thinking about the consequences of our actions right. on 
other human beings, on animals, etc. One of the challenges with things like diversity or trans, right, is we want to create an inclusive society. And how do we how do we bring more people in if we're always using the same criteria that got you to where you are? It's a difficult conversation. It can't just be a simple question of no, merit it's, versus it's, no merit. It's not a simple question. And of course, when groups are disadvantaged, um, they may have merit, but it doesn't show itself um, because they haven't had the educational background to get it or in other ways, um, they haven't just haven't had the opportunities. Maybe they couldn't afford the individual tutoring that uh, wealthier uh, families might give to their kids. So certainly you have to take all of those factors into account. But, um, you know, the idea that you just have to have a certain number of people of different backgrounds uh, and that you will appoint them or that you will give them funding um, because of that reason, um, you know, that's questionable at least. Uh, you know, I think that's at least it should be debated. And uh, what, whether you come down one side or the other on it, I think the, the fact that these authors could not get their article published except through our journal um, is a worrying sign because I think the way if you don't like ideas then it's not a it's not good to just suppress them what you should do is refute them produce yeah. your counter arguments and if people want to send refu refutations of any of the articles in the journal of controversial ideas uh, we'll also send them to our reviewers and uh, we will publish them if, if they're yeah well I, I, I think well it's I agree with you I think that obviously we want a forum for ideas